When our children were small and we came to an intersection, especially downtown, we would tell them to stop, look, and listen before they go. There used to be a, a railway safety advertisement that went on for decades that said stop, look, and listen when you came to a railroad track. And that's good advice in many different areas. Stop, look around, see what's there, and listen before you go. It is the same with interpreting the Bible and getting something out of the Bible. If you want to get the Bible into your life, these are four things that we need to do. Very simple things. Stop, look, and listen before you go. But then go. Or as Rick Warren said <coughs> in his 40 Days in the Word, observation, interpretation, correlation, and application. Stop, look, listen before you go. First, stop. And stopping is perhaps the key in our culture today. We are such busy people. If I asked you, I'm not going to ask you to do this, but if I asked you to raise your hand if you were consider yourself busy, most of you would raise your hand. There was an article in the New York Times uh, this, this year that talked about how the standard response to how are you today is, you know, I'm busy. It's kind of a negative way to say something positive. And it went on to say that we somehow try to hide our emptiness by being busy. But if you want to listen to God, you have to stop and listen. That's why God talked about having a Sabbath. That's why we just need to stop and, and breathe and s not just smell the roses, but to get refreshed so that we can live our lives the way they're supposed to be lived. Not in a dead run, but being able to enjoy the life around us. The first step to reading the Bible is to stop. Or as our passage says, to concentrate, to concentrate. To stop, to concentrate on anything, you have to stop and focus. And sometimes we need to focus on the word of God to get refreshed and strengthened for our lives. The psalmist said in the passage you read in our, uh, I think our, our confession, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Sometimes you just have to turn off all the noise, the music even, the radio, uh, the TV, the internet, the text messages. Sometimes you just need to stop to listen, to listen to what's important, to listen to God. If you want to listen to the Bible, the first step in getting the Bible into your life, the first step in any kind of Bible study is to plan on doing it. And sometimes that means a week before or months before or the day before, plan on stopping at a certain time and a certain place and a certain way to listen. And then ask when you stop, what are the characters in this study. Observe. Observe. What are the characters that are there? What is this trying to say to me? What is the main point? What really happened here? Make an observation of what the Bible is saying in order to put it in your life. The tallest deck on a ship is often called the observation deck. It used to be up that the railroad cars had this tall car and you could get up in the top level of that, and they call it the observation car, the observation lounge. And that even carried over into airplanes for a while. Some air jets had these observation decks. You could go up on the top level and look out and see around and observe what's going on. Observatory is one of the highest places. You can go out and away from the light, away from the distractions, 
and look at the stars. And one of the first steps for Bible study is to observe, to stop and observe what's going on, to look out and get a good view of what's going on. So the first step in Bible study is to stop and observe what the Bible has to say. The go part is the application part. It is not enough when you come to an intersection to stop, look, and listen, and then just stop. At the way be clear, then go. We are called to apply the word to our our hearts, not be just hearers of the word, but be doers as well. The Bible says that uh, knowledge puffs up, but we are called to love, which builds up. So we're called to ask, how does this passage that I've observed, how does this passage that I've interpreted, how does this passage that I've compared with other passages of scriptures, how does it apply to me in my day? Karl Barth used to say, when you read the Bible, You need to have the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other. In other words, the scripture is is for today. It's for us. And we need to apply it to our day and not just leave it back in its day. The Holy Spirit makes the Bible alive for us in our day. And so, when you read scripture, we do not need to leave God out of our interpretation or application of it. You know, I have some friends who, they'll look at the Bible like, a, you know, like it's a history book or like it's an academic text. And they're not looking at the Bible as the Word of God. They're not asking God, show me what you want me to learn here. They're not asking God, show me how this might apply to my life. Instead, they're just reading it for knowledge's sake. And the Bible is not meant to just be an informed book. I mean, it's nice reading. But put God into your study. God has given you your mind. Put God into your mind. But also don't leave your mind out. Think critically about the scripture. Ask good, hard questions about the scripture. Don't be afraid to ask those questions. But always ask with faith. Combine your mind with faith. And don't leave your faith out of your mind or your mind out of your faith. In our 40 Days in the Word program, Rick Warren talks about using the the word space pets as a way to remember how to apply the word to your life. Is there a sin for me to confess, a promise for me to keep? Uh, And and he, he has one for each one. I like the word spec. Is there a sin for me to confess, a promise for me to claim, an example for me to follow, a command for me to obey, a thought for me to keep? Maybe because it's shorter. But seek to apply the word of God to your life. Ask questions of the Bible. Ask God these questions. Lord, is there something there for me? Don't just read the Bible without asking God to help you understand it and to apply it to your lives. Our passage that we read today in 2 Timothy 2, 16, in the message version, it says... These are not mere words, you know. If they are not backed by a godly life, they accumulate as poison in the soul. In other words, if you're just listening, but you're not applying it, the word becomes poison to your soul. Don't be just hearers of God's word, but apply it to your life. Try to live it out. This year off uh, Long Beach, California, there was a, a, an accident. Two ladies were surfing, and one of the ladies looked over and saw the other lady was having a seizure. And, and she called out, but nobody came to help her except another surfer about 30 feet away came over there and helped her get back on the board and took her into land. Well, when the newspaper came out the next day, it says that the lifeguards came, and they jumped into the water, and they saved this person who was having a seizure and did mouth-to-mouth resuscitation, when in fact it was about the opposite. The lifeguards had very little to do with it. The lifeguards, there were three lifeguards there, very near where this person was having trouble, and they just talked to each other. 
They were so busy talking to each other that they couldn't hear the cries of people asking for their help. And these lifeguards, you know, they had all the training. They had the classes. They had the right equipment. They knew how to do the right thing. But they weren't applying it. A lot of us want to go to lifeguard school. We want to see what the Bible says. And, and that's great. And we want to learn and, and get the right, be equipped to live the Christian life. And that's wonderful. But you know, if you're a bitter, cantankerous, mean person, you need to change and let God's word change you and make you better and sharpen you and make you more of a person like Jesus Christ. That is our goal. Our goal is not information. Our goal is transformation. Our goal is to make the world different and the world becomes different when we become different. So stop. Stop what you're doing and read the Bible. Look. See what it says. Interpret it. Listen. Compare other scriptures with what you've read. And then go. Apply the word of God to your life.